A very good evening uh, to you all, uh, dear brothers in Christ. So last few weeks, uh, we studied about uh, the subject about the church. We saw what is the meaning of church uh, in the Bible. So in the Bible, the church uh, means uh, the word, Greek word means ecclesia. So ecclesia means uh, uh, a gathering. It doesn't mean a physical place. It doesn't mean a building. So hence we saw clearly in the Bible that uh, the word Ecclesia is a group of called out ones from the world called to be saints to live a holy life. So we see that uh, this uh, Ecclesia, this church, uh, it has got uh, different, uh, you see, uh, classes uh, in the Gospel Age. So in the Gospel Age, uh, we saw that how there are different types of Christians in the world. We saw about the category of Q, who are termed as hypocrites, uh, who don't uh, really believe in Jesus uh, and Jesus glad that uh, Jesus died for us. Uh, and uh, we also learned about uh, Group P, the Group P, uh, the group of uh, uh, believers uh, who are justified in Christ, uh, but uh, they don't do anything for Christ. Uh, they just, uh, you see, uh, go to the churches, uh, the good believers, carry the Bible, read the Bible. You see, they sing songs, uh, attend cottage meetings, prayer meetings, everything. But uh, they do all these things uh, only to seek the blessings of the Lord. So rather uh, they doing anything to the Lord, uh, you see, uh, they uh, don't offer the anything to the Lord. You see, so uh, we have seen uh, this uh, category of people. We saw how uh, uh, the believers are there and how hypocrites are there. So we also saw, is this sufficient? Because uh, during the days of Jesus also, there were many, many good believers who believed in the Lord because of the miracles he did, because of the healings he did. But uh, we read in John 2nd uh, chapter, last two verses, uh, where uh, Jesus did not believe them. So it is important then we believing uh, Jesus, uh, Jesus should believe us. That is very, very much uh, important. Uh, so we see that, uh, you see, just by believing uh, Christ is not sufficient. There is one more thing that is required. Uh, so what is that uh, condition that is required? You saw that condition is uh, a one step ahead uh, where we offer our bodies as a living sacrifice. So we have seen these three categories, hypocrites, the called was the believers, and the chosen ones uh, who are called to, you see, uh, to follow Christ and who are chosen to, you see, offer their bodies as a living sacrifice to our Lord. Hence, uh, uh, we also saw last time that Jesus was on this plane, a plane of uh, M, where he consecrated his life to the Lord and dedicated his life uh, to the Lord, you see. And uh, he is, uh, they are the part of the chosen, uh, you see, class. So, the chosen class in the Bible, they are termed as followers. Jesus put a condition, if any man wants to be my disciple, let him deny himself, carry the cross and follow me. So, these are the people who not only, you see, want to believe in the Lord, but uh, they deny themselves, uh, carry the cross, take responsibility and, uh, you see, and uh, uh, match, uh, you see, risk uh, for the Lord, uh, and follow his footsteps. Hence, uh, we also saw that uh, how many uh, percentage or how many, you see, uh, uh, Christians are like this in this world. If you see, it is just a mere one uh, percent. You see, many people believe on the Lord, you see, as uh, they believed in uh, during the days of Jesus. So we saw an example where uh, the ten lepers uh, met our Lord. The ten lepers uh, asked our Lord, Lord, please heal us of our leprosy. And Jesus healed them of their leprosy as they were going. They were totally healed. So, among them, only one came back and gave gratitude to the Lord. So, that one person, if you see in the Bible, he was a Samaritan. So, Jesus puts a word saying, there were ten that were healed, but it is easy to only one that came and gave glorified to God. 
So that is the condition of the world today, dear brethren. The majority of the Christians, 99% of the Christians are busy, you see, taking blessings, uh, obtaining blessings uh, and all the things from the Lord uh, but rather than uh, what they do to the Lord is very, very little, dear brethren. Therefore, you see, so uh, we need to think whether we need to be believers or followers of Christ. So once we decide to be uh, the followers of Christ, uh, you see, that is the time that we dedicate our life to the Lord in consecration. You see, Jesus began his uh, ministry. Jesus began walking in the narrow way when it is only when he took his baptism. It's since his immersion that Jesus began to walk in the path of the time. You see, narrow way, dear brethren. You see, uh, that is the time that uh, Jesus was anointed with the Holy Spirit, isn't it? So it is the same way with us. When we offer our bodies as a living sacrifice, when we dedicate completely to the Lord, you see, that is the time our Lord seals us with the Holy Spirit. He anoints us with the Holy Spirit. Let us read 2 Corinthians one twenty-two, brother. He who has also sealed us and given the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts. Thank you, brother. He uh, who hath also sealed us and given us the earnest of the Spirit uh, in our hearts. So, God has sealed us with the Holy Spirit. So, that seal is the acknowledgement that uh, our sacrifice is acceptable to the Lord. And that is the time a person becomes a new creature. You see, the Bible says, no, uh, who are in Christ, uh, if any man is Christ, uh, he is a new creature. All things have passed away. So all things have become new. So new creature, you see, what is a new creature? You see, you might have heard the word about born again Christian, isn't it? Now, what is the meaning of born again Christian? Now, who is a born again Christian? Everybody thinks that as soon as a man is immersed, uh, you see, he is a born again Christian. He is born of the Holy Spirit. Where does the Bible say about born again Christian? Jesus tells this one to Nicodemus. John, third chapter. See, Nicodemus was a very religious person, very pious person. He wanted to live as much as pleasing to the Lord. So once in the night, you see, he came to Jesus and asked him, Lord, what should I do to enter into the kingdom of God? And that is the time, you see, Jesus, uh, you see, gave the reply, saying, until a man be born of the water and spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. I read brother, John 3, 5. Brother, huh? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. See, except a man is born of the water and Spirit. You see, born of the water, born of the Spirit. So, born of the water means what? When, if he is immersed in water, he is born of the water. The born of the Spirit means what? Everybody thinks that as soon as we baptize, God gives us the Holy Spirit. That is the time that on the spot we are born of the Spirit. Okay. Now, does the Bible say so? But as soon as we are baptized, once when the God gives us the Holy Spirit, we are born of the Spirit. What does the Bible say so? What does the Bible say? Jesus gives the answer in verse 8, saying, How will those persons who are born of the Spirit be? Read verse 8, brother. Same chapter, verse 8. It's given there. The wine bloweth where it leaseth, and though here is the sound thereof, but cannot tell whence it comes, and it whether it goes. So it's everyone that is born of this wind. You see, Jesus gives up the example about wind. The wind blows, uh, you can listen, the wind blowing, uh, but uh, you can hear the sound also, but you can't see from where the wind is coming and where the wind is going. Uh, it's invisible, you see. Correct, no? See, now also near to you, there is a lot of air. Uh, you see, wind is there. We can't see it, uh, but we can listen to his uh, voice. Uh, we can feel it. Uh, 
But can we see it? Huh? No. Jesus tells uh, each and every person who are born of the Spirit are like the wind, it seems. That means they will be invisible. Now, are all the Christians who are baptized and uh, who are anointed with God's Holy Spirit, are they invisible? No. None of them are invisible. They are visible. We can clearly see them. We can touch them. We can feel them. But Jesus says that they will be invisible. So what is the meaning of this born of the Spirit? You see, the born of the Spirit, you see, Jesus himself is a grand example of being born of the Spirit. You see, when was Jesus born of the Spirit? So Jesus was a person who was filled with the Holy Spirit without measure. John 3.33 it says, no? Jesus was filled with the Holy Spirit beyond measure. But when was Jesus born of the Spirit? You see, like the wind, he could come and go. When? When actually that one happened, if you see, that happened only after the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, not before his resurrection in the flesh. Jesus had to die in the flesh. Once he was resurrected as a spirit being in the spiritual nature, he could come and go as a wind invisibly. That was the time Jesus was born of the spirit. See, we all know, you see, when Jesus was resurrected, he appeared to the disciples so many times. See, once what happened? Let us read. When Jesus appeared to the disciples after resurrection, how was the situation? John chapter 20, verse 19, brother. Huh. In the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and he stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be unto you. Hmm. You see? The same day in the evening. Uh, huh? What happened to him, sir? When the doors were shut, uh, the disciples were assembled uh, in a room because of the fear of the Jews. You see, they were all fearing because they feared that the Jews will come and arrest them and crucify them also. Hence, they were in a locked room. The doors were locked. You see, if the door is locked, and can send somebody come inside. Nobody can come inside once the door is locked. But you see, the verse says, and Jesus came and stood in midst of them. Now, how did Jesus come when the door is locked? You see, when the door is locked, only a person who can come is a spirit being. So Jesus was resurrected in a spirit being. Even when the door was locked, he came suddenly and stood before them. It was like the wind. Imagine if even if the door is locked, don't you think the wind will come inside? The air will come inside? It will come. You see, that is the way and that is the, you see, the condition of a person who is born of the Spirit. You see, Jesus clearly proved how a person will be if he is born of the Spirit. That he will be invisible. Nobody can see. You see, and as, soon as, as soon as Jesus came inside and appeared to them, what did Jesus say? The first word, peace be unto you. Why did Jesus use the word peace be unto you? Because they will be terrified, frightened. Hence, uh, he told, no, no, don't worry, it's me only. You see? And to pacify them, Jesus said, peace be unto you. Dear brethren, therefore, if you see, uh, so one will be born of the spirit only after death and resurrection as a spirit uh, being. Therefore, if you see that word, Greek word, which uh, Jesus uses in John 3rd chapter, that uh, you must be one, should be born again, to see the kingdom of God, that means born again. That word is from the Greek word ginaio. Ginaio means what? That means begotten or born. In Greek, for both word begotten and word born, there is only one Greek word that is ginaio. You see? And that can be applicable to either of these words. You see? But uh, practically, there is a difference of these uh, words. You see, when will the child be born? You see, as soon as, uh, uh, you see, uh, it is conceived immediately the child is born? No. 
Okay, is a child born without any conception? No. So first, there is a process for a child to be born, isn't it? First, what will happen? Conception will be taking place in the mother's womb. That is called the begotten condition. Once they are begotten, only after nine months will a child be born. So first, there is a process, you see, for a person to be born. You see, it doesn't happen immediately, just like that. It takes some time. First begotten, next growth, next only born condition. This is what Jesus says. See, as soon as Jesus said uh, this verse to Nicodemus, that one should be born again, that uh, to see the kingdom of heaven, Nicodemus was surprised. How Lord is it possible? Huh? How can I be born again? I am old already. Huh? Do you think that I should go in my mother's womb and be born again from her womb? Huh? Is this the way you are telling me? You see? Read verse 4. Brother. See what Nicodemus says. John 3rd chapter verse 4. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Uh, can he enter into the mother's womb a second time and be born at this old age? No. Then what was Jesus trying to say? The answer is given in verse 6. You see, the answer, what Jesus was actually trying to convey to Nicodemus is given in verse 6. Read verse 6. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is the spirit. Ah, here Jesus tells, how is it possible? Means there is a process. What is the process? Like there is a process for one has to be born in the flesh. What has to happen first? He has to be conceived in the flesh. Then only he can be born in the flesh. That is the condition. You see, to be born in the flesh. So similarly, as there is a process for one to be first begotten in the flesh and born in the flesh, you see, similarly, if a person has to be Born in the spirit, first what should happen, it seems. The begotten process should happen, it seems. You see, I gave an example. You see, child doesn't be born immediately. It first has to be conceived. You see, in the mother's womb, it will take time to be, you see, growing, growing, growing. And after a certain months, then only the child will be born. So similarly, every person who is born of the spirit who has to be born of the Spirit, has to be first begotten of the Holy Spirit. And that takes place at baptism, when God gives us the Holy Spirit. That is the time one is begotten, not born. You see? See, there is a difference. So when will a person be born? It is only after his death and resurrection. He is born in a spirit being. See, we know these things very clearly in the life of Jesus. See, Jesus was anointed with the Holy Spirit when at baptism. Was he immediately born in the spirit that he could you see, go and come like wind without anybody seeing him? No. Everybody saw him clearly. So, when was Jesus born invisibly? He could come and go suddenly. It is only after is resurrection. So Jesus was begotten of the Holy Spirit at baptism. He had to prove his faithfulness to God until death. At death, he was proven faithful to God. And in the resurrection, he was resurrected as a spirit being and he was born as a spiritual being in a spiritual nature where he could come and go like a wind. Why? Why this process is required, dear brethren? Why can't we go in this flesh directly to heaven? No, dear brethren. We can't go to heaven in this flesh. Why? Because the Bible clearly says that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Read, brother. 1 Corinthians 15, 50, brother. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood, 
neither that corruption inherit in corruption ah now this say say brethren flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of god you can't go to kingdom of heaven in this spiritual in this fleshly body because this fleshly body has got limitations sir we can't go just like that ah uh, you see even if we need to go to certain extent we can go by plane or rocket no not go to heaven with this body you see so this body has to be quit here only with spiritual body only can we go to heaven dear brother just think how did jesus go to heaven did he go in the same body huh? no jesus was resurrected as a spiritual being you see and in the spiritual body he was resurrected in the spiritual body jesus went to huh? you see heaven uh, and offered his sacrifice to the lord uh, you see so we should all uh, understand this matters very clearly see in the bible is very uh, given very clearly uh, two angels uh, who took them to jesus to the heaven what did they say oh people of galilee whom are you seeing you see the jesus same jesus as he is going he will return the same way how did jesus go he was went like a spiritual being two angels you see huh were with him when he went to you see the spiritual realm remember jesus had three birth first he was created as logos with the father the bible says no in the beginning was a word john first chapter ah so in the beginning so the word had a beginning so he was the first creation of god he was created as a mighty spiritual being the great morning star the bright morning star who was with the father but once when adam sinned jesus left the spiritual nature you see he left the spiritual nature and came to earth in a fleshly nature and he came why to die for man so that he may save mankind from death so jesus was born in a fleshly you see way through the womb of mary through mary jesus was born as a earthly being and this earthly life jesus sacrificed to the lord in doing his will and he was buried and resurrected as what as a spirit being on the third day so three births were there for jesus you see so each and every person you see who has to go to heaven they have to follow this process you see they have to become the followers of jesus offer their bodies as a living sacrifice you see and in exchange for that heavenly body that is the time god gives us the holy spirit and this holy spirit it will be growing yeah inside our human body how how god how a small child is growing in the mother's womb for how many months mind me similarly one who is begotten of the holy spirit he has to grow in the holy spirit remember when he was just there no huh? quench not the spirit be you filled with the spirit you see so how can we be filled with the spirit so day by day we need to give good nutrition food to this new creature you see so this begotten new creature of the holy spirit you see that is uh, the new creation the new man that has to be fed daily with the god's word strong meat you see then only what will happen now uh, it will go strong in the lord uh, you see but imagine if a mother doesn't eat good food what will happen to the child uh, it will suffer loss you see it will suffer lot of uh, things it will become weak uh, similarly we if we give good spiritual food for the new creature then only it will be strong dear brethren therefore ha eh? what does the bible say read second corinthians 4 7 corinthians 4 7 brother ha huh? but we have this treasure in earthen vessel that the excellency of the power may be of god and not of us hmm you see we have this treasure in the earthen vessel You see, the God's Holy Spirit. Where has God kept it in this earthen vessel, dear brethren? So this is earthen vessel, leaky vessel. So because of our weakness, this will be keep on going out. Ah, but day by day we should be filled with the Holy Spirit. Ah, day by day we should be renewed. 
and uh, filled with the Holy Spirit and grow in the Lord. Uh, dear brethren, uh -huh, that is the time we will go strong in the Lord. Okay? So, answer, you see, uh, we read in the Bible now, yeah? about a new creature, old creature, uh, a new man who is uh, born in Adam, this fleshly being, always pushes us and pulls us uh, to sin against the Lord. But the new creature, you see, the new man, the new creation, which has been begotten of the Holy Spirit, uh, what does it do? Uh, it uh, motivates us to walk in the walk of Christ, uh, live faithfully to God. Uh, but, uh, you see, is it so easy that immediately can we walk uh, and grow into, become like Christ? No, dear brother, there is a fight, uh, there is a warfare that happens daily in this uh, human body. Between whom? Between the new creature and the old creature. Uh -huh. Apostle Paul tells about this warfare only in so many verses. Let us read, brother. You see? Uh, Galatians 5th chapter 16 and 17 brother uh. This I say then walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh for the flesh lust is against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh and these are contrary the one to the other so that you cannot do the things that you do uh, You see this I say uh, walk in the spirit Why? if you walk in the spirit you shall never fulfill the lust of the flesh. But uh, eh? you the flesh, uh, it desires, the, what all the flesh desires, it is against the spirit. Uh. And what all the spirit uh, desires, it is against the flesh. Uh. So there is a warfare. Uh. Eh? Remember this uh, photo. New creature, old creature. New creature will tell, come, let us sit and listen to the class, but what will the old creature tell? Old creature will tell, oh, what is the use, what is the benefit? Uh. Let us come and go enjoy, see movie, go to party, uh, enjoy a New Year party, go here and there, meet uh, friends, relatives, uh, function, attend all these things. Uh, that is the thought of the old creature. That means we are not denying ourselves, carrying the cross. Forget about following Christ. That is the third step. These two steps only, they are not doing it seems. That is the old creature way. So what will happen daily? Daily, there will be a warfare. You see? Uh, they are contrary to each other, dear brethren. Why? That is the reason. What uh, we want to do, we not able to do. You see? There is a fight. There is a warfare. You see? See what uh, Apostle Paul shares his experience. Romans 7, chapter 18 and 19. Brother. For I know that in me, there is in my place, there is no good thing. For to will is present with me. But how to perform that which is good, I find not. But the good that I would do not, but the evil which I would not, that I do. Hmm. See? What does it say? For I know that in me, that is in this flesh, there is nothing that is good. Everything is bad only. Okay? There is nothing good in this whole creature. Everything is waste, bad. But to do, but to do good, that will is present in me. That means what? There's a new creature is there. It was always trying to do good. Huh? But it can't do it. Why? Because uh, the new creature is very small and very weak. It is just a few, million, few months, few, few years old. What about the old creature? The old creature is strong. You see, the old creature has grown well. You see, but it is against the spirit, dear brother. So daily there will be warfare. Imagine a small child who is just uh, two, three years old. Can it fight uh, a man who is 40 years old? No. That is the way with uh, uh, between the old creature and new creature. Huh? For the good that I want to do, I am not able to do. Because the evil that is in me, it is not allowing to do. Uh -huh. So this is a false experience. What good he wanted to do, could not do. What he will, he did not want to do, that only is doing. Why? Because of his fleshly weakness. Now read, brother. 2 Corinthians 9, chapter 26-27. What is the remedy that Apostle Paul tells to do? How did he overcome? Hmm. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight, I, 
not as one that which is here, but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection. Is that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a cast away. Hmm. What is the solution? We need to keep our body under subjection. The new creature should try to fight and overcome the old creature and bring it under control. You see? How is it? Easy? It's not so easy. It's a tough job. But we need to do it. That is the meaning of overcoming voluntarily. Not grumblingly. You see, with a lot of pain. No, sorrow, no. Cheerfully we need to do it. Therefore, Apostle Paul says, I run. You see, not uncertainly. I just don't run simply. But I run to win the fight. To win the race. And I fight. I fight. Not as one that fight the air. You see, but I keep my body under. I bring it into subjection. He is fighting with whom? His own self. There is a fight within our own self. We need to fight and bring it. Bring our body under control. Bring the old creature under control of the new creature. Bring it to subjection. Why? Huh? After preaching to everybody, huh? if we only fall away, how is it possible? Is it good? No. Therefore, this fight is necessary. This fighting should be there, dear brethren. Huh? Ultimately, what will happen? One day, we will win. Initially, it won't happen. You see? Initially, only the old creature will fall. Sorry, old creature only will win. New creature will fall. You see? But uh, as the days goes on, who should win? The new creature should start winning. The old creature should eh? fall. It doesn't happen one day. Slowly, little bit, little bit, little bit, little bit, winning process should come. Ultimately, what happened one day? The new creature will be victorious. See what Apostle Paul says. Second Timothy 4, chapter 7 and 8. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. And so there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. This is the Lord, the righteous does, shall give me at that day. Not to me only, but also unto all them also that love is the case. Mm, you see, I have fought uh, a good fight. Uh -huh. Apostle Paul, you see, in the beginning stage, what all things he wanted to do, he could not do. But now he is able to do everything. He is able to fight everything. He says, I have fought uh, a good fight of faith. I finished my course. Henceforth, there is a crown of righteousness for me, not only for me, but all the people who have overcome. Hence, dear brethren, we need to put off this old man, put on the new man. Uh -huh. Apostle Paul says, no? in Corinthians, in Colossians, so many verses are there. Yeah, it tells, be you filled with the spirit. Uh, you see, grieve not the spirit, uh, quench not the spirit. Uh, you see, uh, rejoice. Uh, you see, when all these things is speaking of the same thing, the fight of the new creature. Read, brother, Colossians 3rd chapter 8, 9 and 10. But now you also put off all this anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Lie not one to another. Seeing that you have put of the old man, which is deep, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge, after the image of him that created him. Ah, you see? Now put off all these things. Which are the, all these things? Sir? Old man's character. Anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. All these things are what? These are all old man's character. Lie not one to another. Speaking lies. Seeing that you have put off the old man with his days, this is like grooming the old cloth. You thrown it off. You see the rags, the filthy rags, the stinking rags, we have thrown it off. You see? Will we ever take it and smell it again? Will we want to put it again back? No. Those are the deeds of the old man. We have thrown it off. Now what we should put? Put on the new man, uh -huh, which is renewed in knowledge. Imagine renewed in knowledge, understanding of the truth. Which is what? After the image of him that created him. After image of Christ, our image of God. You see? So those things, you see, we need to put off and put on. This is a process. This is a fight. You see, dear brethren. So this, not everybody can overcome. You see? 
So among the people who are consecrated, what will happen? Ah, there is again two group. Uh -huh. One group will dedicately whatever they have uh, told as per uh, their uh, words, they will follow it like Apostle Paul. I have fought the good fight. But some people, huh, you see, after fighting, 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 they'll get fed up. You how much to fight? Leave. You see, so what will happen now? Among the chosen people, you see, there are again two types of people. Uh -huh. Just God is not sufficient. Just chosen is not sufficient. Dear brethren, being faithful is very, very important. So we see huh? a group, M is there, M is the chosen people. But among them, you see, the N class of people are there. The N class of people are the faithful ones, dear brethren. So, it is just not sufficient we believe in Christ. It's just not sufficient that we uh, of the chosen class follow the footsteps of Jesus. But we need to prove to our Lord that we will be faithful to our Lord until death. Read Revelation 17, 14, brother. Huh? We shall make war with the Lamb and the Lamb shall overcome. Them, for he is Lord of Lords and King of Kings, and they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. Ah, see, these shall make war with the Lamb, and who are they? Who are these are with the Lord of Lords, and who are they? They are called chosen faithful. You see, not just called, not just chosen, but they're the faithful class. Hence, you see, just by being called, oh, God has called me. Huh? That is not sufficient. Oh, God has chosen me. That is also not sufficient. We need to remain faithful to the Lord until death. Now, the question is that whether you want to be a believer or you just want to be a follower or you want to be a faithful follower until death. That is the question. So, so which is important? Believing is not at all important. Following is also not important. A very, very important concept and the main thing is that after believing, after following the first of Jesus, we need to be faithful until our death. That is what Jesus did and proved to God until his death on the cross. Therefore, these are the real church class people. These class people only, Jesus is seeking in the gospel age. What did Jesus say? Luke 12, 32. Fear not, little flock, for it is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. So, dear brethren, this is about the church part 2. So, next week, we'll continue with another part and uh, we'll understand uh, many more things. Thank you.